guy who's like one of my closest friends had just called my girlfriend, leaving a voicemail saying, I love you, you can beep this or whatever, but I freaked the f out. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2005, the worst thing that could ever happen to you by people you love happened to Matt Hardy. My boy turned into an example. Edge committed the biggest L man's play you could ever do to your boy. Edge stole his best friend's girl and became the biggest heel in the company. If this ever happened to me, I'm having the biggest crash out ever recorded in modern times. But let's reminisce and try to learn so this never happens to us. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the Hardy Boys were the rage and they just had a very different but special feel. In 2000, the Hardy Boys would pick up a new manager in Lita. This team just looked badass. She fit the group perfectly. Hardy Boys gained peak motion when they were feuding with none other than Edge and Christian. When they were going through all these battles, they all became best friends. They had top tier chemistry and it reflected in every way. The Hardy Boys and Lita would be involved in a short storyline with each other in 2001, but it was dropped very quickly. So they all returned as a tag team at the O2 Rumble and this was the best fit for them. On April 6th, Lita was on set for a TV show called Dark Angel and she was doing a fight scene and she did a Hurricane Rana but the dumb broad that took it dropped on her neck and she broke her neck. She took the whole year off but Team Extreme got canned again. Matt would go on and have a great run on Smackdown with his V1 gimmick even winning the Cruiserweight Championship while on the other hand, Jeff got released. This group was cursed and this whole situation was messy. Jeff got released from WWE for drug use, no showing events, not going to rehab, and he was getting shittier in the ring apparently. But Lita would return in September of 03, and shortly after this, Matt switched brands to be on Raw with her. Lita would be involved in a feud with Kane, but Matt would help her fend off Kane, and they reunited. So Matt dropped everything on SmackDown, his great run, just to be on Raw with her. He got demon words, bro. Look at him trying to build a roster. He went for AJ and Lita, and he ended up bagging them both. It's a crazy world we live in. Well, if you count kidnapping and tying her up as bagging, but he was almost in there. You know, we're going to do a little segment. I'm switching topics a little bit. I want to review Kane's Riz and take notes. And this segment is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, they actually didn't uh, sponsor me. Uh, yeah, it's a little awkward. All right, let's see what Kane got in his bag. Let's see what he got. So, uh, you seen any good movies lately? Because I always get what I want. Of all the pieces of property I own, you by far are my favorite. <laughs> Can we get a round of applause for Kane, bro? This yeah, he got it. But all right, anyways, Matt would finally do right, and he faced Kane in a no DQ match at Vengeance, and he actually beat him. All right, Matt. But unfortunately, though, he sold the one that mattered. At SummerSlam, Matt faced Kane in a Till Death Do Us Part match, and yeah, he got his girl taken by Kane. Matt gotta be the cuck of the century at this point. But Kane officially bagged Lita, and they were getting married. A quick marriage. Uh, Kane don't play around with his girls. But they had emo midgets come out and everything. Kane came out in the all white and ooh wee boy was he fresh as hell. But I'm glad he didn't pull a Braun Strowman though and pull up to a wedding looking like this. What a sicko. But Lita came out in a black dress and Kane was not having it at first but he let it slide. They would then read their vows and Just Kane got her pregnant. The what the? My Yo, this part was wham bamming the whole roster? On to the but I don't know, this was crazy. But Lita then read off her vows and she said she still loved Matt. Bro, females are insane. Why do you think females love the Inside Out movies? Their emotions are all over the place. They don't know what to do. But Matt would then interrupt and take out Kane and then scooped up Lita and they started booking it like the greatest love movie ever. They're about to have a good escape. But out of nowhere, a wall of fire goes off and stops them in their tracks. This is the delusional shit they have in their heads what they want you to do for them, bro, I swear. But even God doesn't want Matt to win at this point. I know he was sick, but I can't lie. I'm delusional too. This would be a top tier wedding, you can't lie. But Kane came back and he would choke slam Matt off this stage in front of his girl. <laughs> I know she got the ick. But look at this picture. This is sickening. But Matt needed to take a break to heal from a severe knee injury. And this is where everything fell apart. Matt was gone and Lita was by herself. Lita asked Matt if she could travel with Edge because she didn't like to travel alone. And Matt said it was okay. They were spending so much time together on the road and they were building a bond and they had a lot in common. Matt Hardy woke up one night and he checked Lita's phone because it kept going off. And what he found in her phone, she had voicemails from Edge. 
Edge pulled out the begging Riz and he was probably singing in the rain and he said he was lost without her and he loved her. He was probably gonna pull out the boombox strategy too. That shit has 99% success rate. All the OGs know about the boombox strategy. But all jokes aside, Matt flipped out as he should. Simple code everyone should follow. Bros before hoes. Simple code everybody should follow, but it's rare apparently. But Matt Hardy crashed out and had the whole situation was getting brought to life. Kane took his girl in storyline and Edge took her in real life. Matt Hardy lost his best friend, his girl, and his brother got fired. This man went through some of the worst emotional pain you could go through as a man. But to make everything worse, Matt himself would get released from the WWE. Just so depressed and it felt like I'd lost everything. Matt got fired and everything was going down. But seriously though, screw WWE for doing that. He could have seriously harmed someone or himself. Love scars are no joke. A lot of men die over females. But Matt instantly became beloved and Edge and Lita were despised. Whenever they came out, fans would shower them with booze and you screwed Matt Chance. So you have to make a positive out of a bad situation somehow. Thus, the Edge and Lita pairing was born. Edge was such a nerd though, bro. Who says this? I got this fiery, red-headed sex pot by my side. He really cashed in on his best friend's hoe. I'm crying. <laughs> but that picture of Matt chilling on the couch with his injury hits, bro. This guy was traumatized. They couldn't put us off any longer, though. He needed payback. On the July 11th, 2005 episode of Raw, Edge would get attacked backstage, the camera would pan up, and Matt Hardy was putting belt to ass. Matt was back, and the crowd was going ballistic. Matt and Edge would get into a big brawl, and Matt was laying in. Matt would get on the mic and say his real name, Adam, and just was saying whatever he wanted at this point, even mentioning Ring of Honor. But he was vowing to destroy both of them, and it was very compelling. But next up was something special. The bite this segment. Hey, hey <laughs> this is Matt Hardy. Dog, the nerd interviewer was so desperate for clicks. Lita was over it, and Matt popped up like Pennywise. This was top tier entertainment. I don't know if you guys knew by now or not, but love sells, and it always will sell because everyone can relate to it and it strikes an emotion deep inside. But Matt was coming through the crowd just to attack Edge. This was so lit. Keep in mind, though, he was still fired. On the August 1st episode of Raw, Vince re signed Matt Hardy, and he looked like the biggest star in the company. It would later be announced that Matt would face Edge at SummerSlam. This is one of the dumbest matches I've ever seen in my life. It's true though, nice, nice guys always finish last. Edge won this match in like five minutes by knockout. Now it's smoke for everybody. Hey Vince, you old fart, what was this? They just blew me bro, I'm going to take a break bro. Why can't we all just be friends man? Hey shut up Kelby! Yeah, this feud was not over. The two would have a street fight on Raw, and Matt would hit a side effect to Edge off of the stage. This was needed get back. The two would have another match at Unforgiven in a steel cage match, and at this point, Edge was Mr. Money in the Bank, and he was getting a big push, but in my opinion, I think Matt should have been a huge face as well, just like Jeff. But they would have their match, and they wanted him dead, so what did he do? He headed to the top of the steel cage and dropped a huge leg drop on Edge. One, two, three. Matt got his get back. Matt recently in an interview with CVV said that this has messed up his back for weeks, but it was worth it in my opinion. Two would face each other one more time on an episode of Raw in a loser leaves Raw match. Matt literally lost the match, bro. I don't appreciate the hardy hazing, bro. Bully someone else like Bob Holly or some shit. But yeah, man, they screwed Matt and basically sacrificed him for Edge because he was never the same in WWE after this. He would definitely have a good career, don't get me wrong, but I think he could have been a main eventer. He would have a reunion after this with Jeff as well, but it felt like he was always in Jeff's shadow. And also, I gotta say, Matt had a leader cardboard cutout after the fight, bro. Uh, he was kinda, he was down bad. But to be fair, Jeff did go on to have the, one of the best runs in WWE history in 08 and 09, but still, they could have handled it so much better. Edge would go on to become a superstar and honestly one of the best heels in WWE. Lita would go on to retire and the two would split up. They risked everything for like two years, man. That's so wack. But Matt would coast into his WWE's career and eventually leave WWE. Matt would go on to TNA and so would Jeff. So now, Lita was gone, Jeff was gone, 
and now Matt was gone. Edge was the only one left in WWE. Edge would go on to be a world champion in like 2011, but all the years of beating up his body, Edge got the worst news a wrestler could get. He was forced to retire. Karma is a real thing, it's crazy how the world works. But Lita was forced to retire in 05, and Edge stole Lita away from Matt while Matt was injured. So now, Edge would go away for years, and Matt would have a complete resurgence in TNA. It's crazy how the tides turned. Plus one for the good guys. But Broken Matt and Brother Nero carried TNA for years, but they knew it was time to come home. WrestleMania 33, they were home. They came out to a huge pop, showed out, and even won the tag team titles in the same show. The Hardy Boys were in full motion, and they would grind it out for a few years, but Matt would leave and go to AW in the most awkward segment I've ever seen in my life. But get this, in the same year, Edge will return to WWE at the 2020 Royal Rumble after a nine-year retirement. The trajectory of their careers are so fascinating. Edge came back to a huge pop, and I can't even lie, I cried a bit the first time. I'm pretty sure this was the same day Kobe died as well, so rest in peace to Kobe. Edge wouldn't win, but man, this was one for the ages. But now the next year, he would actually win the Rumble and go on to main event Mania 37. Matt would be doing his thing in AW. Jeff would be scorching jobbers. Man, what a burial. But later that year, Jeff would very strangely walk out on WWE. It was such a weird moment that no one ever talks about. But yes, Jeff would have his drug problems, but I don't like mentioning that stuff, so I don't like knocking people when they're down, so express some love. But Jeff would end up leaving WWE and went to AEW with Matt. And to be honest, their AEW run was just so horrible and cursed and they were kind of washed. But shortly after this, the two would basically be stuck on their contract doing nothing really, and they would leave AEW and return to TNA. But as this was happening, Edge would go to AEW. What type of Tom and Jerry episode is this? There's no way it's a Quincy Dank, bro. Like, this is sus. Like, I don't know. This is insane at this point. But now, we are basically in present times. So what are the relationships like now? Well, Edge and Beth Phoenix are married, and they have some kids, and they're locked in. Matt is married to a complete MILF. She's so bad, but good for him. And now, we cycle back to the hoski. Lita is the only one that isn't married. That's karma, I'm telling you. But not too much on her though, she's probably a sweetheart. Everybody makes mistakes. But there it is, man. That is the craziest love triangle I've ever seen in my life. Edge simply folded and broke the bro code. And let this be a lesson to never snake your boy over a female. This simply could have been avoided though. I think Matt was in the right 100% they were in the wrong, but you never know like the full details of what happened, what they were thinking, like what they were doing on the road. But just imagine being Matt Hardy and you see Edge taking your girl to Pound Town on live TV. This is one of the craziest segments I've ever seen in my life. But Matt got his girl taken by Kane, probably Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and Edge. Like, that's bad, bro. But anyways, always remember, all girls are the same, and bros before hoes.